Well, from Elmo to something cute and fluffy, a debate has erupted over whether native animals have any place in our homes. Australians love their pets. In fact, we love them so much that our pet population of 37.1 million is nearly twice our human population. But while most of our animal friends are traditional critters like dogs, cats, birds and fish, a small number of Aussie pet owners have decided to go native. These guys aren't a threat to anything. They're not going to go around killing native birds like cats would, and they're not going to go running around killing larger animals as dogs would. Oh, it's hard to resist this cute little fella, but some animal advocates are totally against the idea. The pet industry itself is problematic, so adding wildlife species to that is, is only going to exacerbate the problem. Possums, for instance, are nocturnal animals. Sugar gliders are nocturnal. They require a lot of care. It'd be hard to find an Aussie that doesn't love our adorable wildlife. But are these special and unique creatures ready to share our homes? That is a kookaburra. <laughs> and Chris Humphrey is a zoologist and director of Wild Action, which takes Aussie animals into classrooms and TV studios, apparently. And we welcome him to the project. G'day, Chris. How are you? Good evening, everyone. We're not going to applaud, mate. All right. We're, we're not going <laughs> to applaud because apparently the kookaburra may attack Carrie. Apparently the kookaburra doesn't like girls, so I'm going to not say much this segment. <laughs> it, it, it felt like a good idea this afternoon. Now, we've, we've got an array of, of native animals here. Talk us through, first of all, what have we, what have we got? We've got a beautiful laughing kookaburra, Australia's largest kingfisher, a western grey kangaroo. Mm -hmm. Cutting up the carry, little squirrel glider on Hughesy's shoulder here, and a, a long-nosed potteroo, which is an endangered species. <laughs> and, and, and so, do these make good pets around the home? Uh, look, some do, some don't. But like a squirrel glider would be great in a suburban house. He's actually can... whispering in my ear. He yeah. says, I love you, Hughesy. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're easy animals to look after, but you do need a special permit for a lot of these creatures. But some of these animals would be great in a, you know, a backyard aviary, or maybe even on this, you know, a block out in the eastern suburbs of, um, you know. Of, of your town. What about big animals like, like wombats or kangaroos, though? I mean, what, what's the story with them? Well, no, no, no one frowns upon the fact that you can keep a, a sheep or a goat in your back garden. But they can't hop out of your backyard. Well, if you've got the right, you know, enclosure, uh, the right fencing, uh, why not have a kangaroo? I kangaroos mean, we... can be feisty, though, can't they? Well, they can be. But, I mean, you need to do some research on keeping these animals. You need to have a special permit to keep them. But uh, for the right person, dedicated individual, they make a terrific animal. And why not save Indigenous creatures and, and teach your family all about, you know, our heritage? Well, the RSVP, RSVP, they're a dating site. <laughs> it is up wrong animals. to date. <laughs> the, it is wrong to date a kookaburra. <laughs> The RSPCA is dead against it because they're saying that, you know, we wouldn't know enough about the right environment for an animal, the right diet, which they do have a point. I'm guessing you don't feed, you know, a little buddy like this whiskers. Like, you know, how do we know what to, to feed Look, them? There's, and... so, there's so many uh, clubs out there and... Oh, buddy, don't you... Oh. Oh. Should I? Don't, no, that's cool. Just don't look at the kookaburra in the eye. Oh. Yeah. But uh, there's, there's so many, so club, there's so many clubs out there. There's so many uh, you know, websites to learn about all this factual information. And there's so many people out there, dedicated uh, breeders, that will set you on the right path. So it's, it's, it's nonsense. It's easy to look after these creatures. It's relatively cheap. And they're not going to keep your neighbours up at night time with barking. And, uh, you know, cats, they eat all of our native fauna. So, so when, you, when you say you need a special permit, you can't just go into the bush and, and grab a pot of root. Absolutely not. Right? <laughs> all these animals are breeding captivity. Um, uh, multi-generation. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, 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 oh. Let's just get uh, you laughing. Can we get the cookie? Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, so how cool is that for a pet? That is all for <laughs> That's all we've got time for. Um, a big, a quiet thank you uh, to Chris <laughs> no and his guests, uh, and a big thanks <laughs> to Barry Cassidy also for joining us tonight. Uh, that's all we've got time for. Is up next though. Thanks for joining us. Nice. <laughs>